dropped the book because it doesn't want to be in my life because it was so terrible. Hey guys, it's Jay and today I'm here with a highly requested video because of my July wrap up I recently posted and it is a review of a book that I really, really hated. And that book is Once in a Full Moon by Ellen Schreiber. Schre Schreiber? Schreiber. I don't know how to say this author's name. I ended up giving this book a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I absolutely hated everything about it. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> this book follows Celeste Parker, who is a popular girl in high school. It must be noted that she is from the east side of Legends Run, which is the popular side where the cool kids hang out. She has a gorgeous boyfriend who is the school jock and everybody wants to be with him. His name is Nash and she also has two best friends, Ivy and Abby. When Brandon Maddox, who lives in the west side of Legend Runs, moves to town, it is very peculiar that she has a connection with him. But because Celeste is from the east side, which is where the popular people are from, she obviously cannot associate with this west sider because, like, ew, gross. But alas, one day, when Celeste is walking home from school, she is attacked by a pack of wolves. And who happens to be there to save the day? Oh, Brandon Maddox. So when Brandon comes to her rescue, both of their worlds change because of something that happens with this wolf pack. And that's all I'm going to say for the synopsis. This book is so cringeworthy, it hurt my soul so much. Which I would like to point out is one of the author's favorite words. Celeste felt everything in her soul, and I mean everything, deep down in her soul. I really did not like this book. I give it a 1 out of 5 stars. I found that the writing style was so choppy and hard to read. It was like literally every sentence was three or four or five words long or just a giant run-on sentence. It made no sense to me, the flow. I just, I could not with it. I just could not. It almost felt like the author literally would think of something and be like, yeah, that's good, and then write it down, and then when it came to editing, she was like, nah, I don't care. Like, we just gonna leave it how it is, and that's my book. Also, nothing happened in this book. There was no plot whatsoever. The main character, Celeste, drove me insane. She's like your stereotypical goody two-shoes who wanted to make everybody else happy. Then she meets a boy, and every other sentence in the book was how much she loved him, and how much she wanted to be with him, and how he completed her. Literally every other line was how hot Brandon was, and how she was his one true love, and how they could never be apart from each other. But they had to be apart because, you know, she's from the east side, and he's from the west side, and obviously they can't be together because of that. The other annoying thing, they literally never talked to each other, but they were so in love. Like, they literally knew nothing about each other, but when they were together, there was this obvious connection. And they just, they needed each other in their lives, and it just, no, just no. It was such an insta-lovey thing, and your girl, she hates her insta-love. So your girl was not happy. It was, it was just a big book of nope. Just a big book of nope. No. There was literally no connection between them at all. It was literally just Celeste thought he was really hot and attractive and that's why she liked him. And another thing, the entire time that she's like, oh he's my one true love, I'll never be with anybody else, she's contemplating getting back with Nash. So like, where's the logic here? I don't understand. And her reason for getting back to with Nash was because they had fun together. Like honestly, if you were so in love with Brandon, you would not be thinking in any way, shape, or form about getting back with Nash because like, would your focus not all be on Brandon and how much you love him. Like, someone please connect the dots for me here because I'm not, I'm not seeing how these things work out. I don't... I can't. It is also apparent from this book that if you fall in love, you become a sniveling idiot and you cannot function unless this boy is around you 24-7. And then let's, let's talk about Brandon. Why don't we? Because, you know, he's the other main character. Yeah, he is the biggest cliche in the entire world of YA tropes. He's your typical, like, misunderstood boy who is super caring and passionate and he loves animals. Obviously, because why wouldn't he? There's one point in the story where, in his wolf form... We're just gonna do this for wolf form. We'll talk about that later. The topic of him hunting comes up and he is devastated. Right? Like, he is beyond himself. Oh my god, I hurt an animal. How can I live with myself? But then, then he proceeds to cook steak on an open fire for Celeste. Okay, so where are you getting the steak from? Oh, it came from his grandparents' freezer, so obviously that's okay. But if he were to hunt, you know, as a wolf, that's not okay, because obviously that's completely different, you know, eating meat as an animal versus eating meat as a human, which is an animal. I just... <sighs> I can't. Like he was practically crying over the thought of killing an animal two seconds later. He's cooking steak on an open fire. I just... I don't understand 
And then let's talk about the two best friends, Ivy and Abby, why don't we? Because it just gets better and better. They were constantly threatening to dump Celeste because she would, wanted to date this Brandon boy instead of the popular Nash. Like, ew, that's disgusting. Who would want to date an outsider when you have popular Nash, you know, being an asshole the entire book? Pretty much the entire book, they constantly shunned Celeste for being too nice and wanting to be friends with the outsider because that's disgusting. I just... Why can't everybody just get along with everybody? I don't understand the logic of the mean girls in books. I just uh, cannot relate. And then some of the things that Nash would say were just like borderline creepy and stalkerish and he was like literally obsessed with Celeste. And personally, if I had a boyfriend like that, I would run away screaming as well. Like I would be like, bish, back up off me, like with personal space, personal bubble, like 20 feet. Like, I'm getting a restraining order from you. And let's talk about this whole werewolf thing, why don't we? Because that's what mostly the book is about, you know? This werewolf thing. Oh my god, the concept of werewolves in this book! I can't deal with it, I can't do it! The wolf form that Brandon takes consists of a goatee and fangs. That's, that's the wolf form. Goatee and fangs. Yep, now he's a wolf. Who would've thought? Like, I'm sorry, growing your hair out longer, sprouting fangs, and getting a deeper, sexier voice does not equal werewolf, okay? Where's his little ears? Where's his dang snout, okay? Where is his tail? That's what I would like to know. This this book does not portray my werewolves that I love. It literally, just, he grew a goatee. Like, I, so if my boyfriend grows a goatee, is he now a werewolf? That's my question. I'd love to know the answer to that. Like, your girl just wanted a snarling beast, but no, she gets a guy with a goatee. Like, I'm so disappointed. I don't know how this was published. I know that sounds really mean, but like... Maybe I would have liked it when I was like 12, because I'm pretty sure like that's what this book is like aimed for. It doesn't have like age range, but I would say like it is a little kid book or like middle grade, but not because it's supposed to be YA. There's a second book in this series. I have it. And I, I don't want to read it, but like I kind of want to just to see if it's as bad as this one. Maybe it'll happen, maybe not, but would not recommend this book. One out of five stars. Honestly, I would probably have given it like 0.5, but I'm not that harsh. I mean, I'm pretty harsh, but not that harsh. I mean, read it if you want to, but I'm getting rid of it as soon as I'm done editing this video. Alright guys, so that was my review of Once in a Full Moon by Ellen Schreiber, Schreiber, I forget. Let me know down below if you've read this book, if you liked the book, and um, yeah. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!